everybody, welcome back to your Week in Geekdom. Geo here, and today we're going over the nominees for that famous anime popularity contest, or rather, I should say, the Crunchyroll Anime Awards for 2022. Obviously, people are divided with this. A lot of people don't like the categories or the nominees, and I can see that, and I agree for the most part. They're pretty spot on. As you can see here at the time of recording this video, vote now until January 25, vote daily. A lot of categories, anime of the year, best boy, best girl, best protagonist, best antagonist, best fight scene, best director, best animation, best character design, best score, vocal performance in the original Japanese and English dubbing and English dubbing, best opening sequence, best ending sequence, best action, comedy, drama, romance, fantasy, and best film. We're gonna start with best film and, you know, lead up to the big one, like the anime of the year, of course, of 2021. Okay, so for best film, the nominees are Belle, which just came out theatrically in the US. I Unfortunately, I have not seen it yet. I'm probably gonna wait for a whole media release unless somebody decides to stream it or you can rent it early digitally or something like that. But if not, I'm just going to wait for a uh, Blu-ray release. Uh, Demon Slayer, Mugen Train, the movie. Uh, Shirobako, the movie. Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 thrice upon a time, or is also known as the final rebuild of Evangelion movie. Uh, Josie, the tiger and the fish and words bubble up like soda pop. Now, from what I remember, uh, Evangelion you can watch on Amazon Prime. Josie the Tiger and the Fish did have a theatrical release, but it's not streaming. It comes out uh, in February, if I remember correctly. Uh, words bubble up like soda pop. I think you can watch on Netflix. I don't know about Shirobako. And Mugen Train, you can watch it anywhere at this point. It's out on Blu-ray, it's out on Crunchyroll and Funimation, and etc, etc. So, the only one I haven't seen from this batch as, as of this episode, unfortunately, uh, I have not seen Shirobako, uh, Bell, and Evangelion. <laughs> I've been holding up uh, to watch that. I wanted to do a marathon of the whole series and then my rebuild Ava Blu-rays and then watch the new movie. Uh, so I might still do that. I might not. I might just go ahead and watch uh, Evangelion the movie. So that said, in good conscience, I can't vote for it because I technically haven't seen it and I've heard wonderful things from people and I've also heard people complain about the film, so uh, I can't pick that. I haven't seen Belle. Words bubble up like soda pop. It was alright. It was fun. I like the color palette for that one. Uh, Demon Slayer Mugen Train was good, but I am going to have to go with Josie the Tiger and the Fish. So let's do that. Confirm that's my pick for best film out of that. Although, I suspect even Galleon would win. Best Fantasy Series. Now, this is interesting. A lot of people are complaining because there are a bunch of series that missed out on being nominated. And stuff that's not airing on Crunchyroll, like uh, Mushiko Tensei, for example. But, uh, hey, at least it's here on the Best Fantasy section. You know, whatever. Uh, so, we have Mushiko Tensei Jobless Reincarnation. Uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, season two, to your eternity, a ranking of kings, the case study of Vanitas, Wonder Egg priority. Wonder Egg is a gorgeous looking series, but I cannot vote for it because I think that ending was not that great. It, it did not stick the landing, in my opinion. Case, uh, case study of Vanitas was not my thing, um, but it looks great from Bones. Ranking of Kings is one of my favorite shows of last year, so I'm partial to this one. To Your Eternity, again, one of my top five shows of last year. That time I got reincarnated as a slime, a lot of fun. And Mushiko Tensei, one of my favorite shows from last year. So this one's a little bit tough. I know Mushiko Tensei is not nominated for Anime of the Year, but I'm inclined to give it to, uh, to Your Eternity, honestly, or Mushiko Tensei. Ranking of Kings is up there with the uh, best show, uh, best animated series, so we'll go over that in a second. But fantasy series, I gotta give it, it's either Tio Eternity or Mushiko Tensei. The animation from Studio Bind just 
stellar, uh, a beautiful series. And to your eternity, just a beautiful uh, series with uh, right with emotion and character work, and just a beautiful journey of this character of Fushi, the immortal, going through life and experiencing the lives of other people and all that stuff. Just a great series overall. And the manga is one of my all-time favorite ongoing manga at the moment. Uh, whew, that's a tough one. I think I'm going to give it to you, to your eternity. Even though I really like Mushiko Tensei. And Roxy is one of my favorite characters. So I'm going to go with that. And I represent my boy Fuji. Best Romance. This is a no-brainer. Uh, Komi Can't Communicate was cute, beautifully animated. Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro is surprisingly wholesome. I really enjoyed that series. Uh, Beastars, I love Beastars, but I, I'm not a fan of the anime, that animation style. Uh, the Duke of Death and His Maid, same deal. Uh, Horimiya was great. A lot of character progression with all the couples and the romance and all that stuff. You gotta go with Fruits Basket the final season. That thing was just beautiful all around. That's my pick. Best Drama. 86, Fruits Basket, Odd Taxi, Wonder Egg Priority, To Your Eternity, Kageki Shoujo. This is a tough one. Odd Taxi is phenomenal, one of my favorites. Wonder Egg, we already talked about that. Fruits Basket. I'm not gonna repeat another series for another category, so I'm gonna skip it for Best Drama. Uh, and I already voted for tier, To Your Eternity. I'm going to I'm going to pick um, 86 on that one. Great drama slash uh, mech slash war whatever type show. Best comedy. Komi Can't Communicate, Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan, Heaven's Design Team, really underrated series right there, and Odd Taxi. I don't really consider Odd Taxi a comedy. And why is it nominated for drama and comedy? Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. I gotta represent my favorite dragons. So that's my pick for best comedy. Best action. Action series or like best action sequences? And why is Jujutsu, I mean, Jujutsu Kaisen, yes, it did technically finish airing in 2021, but it was already nominated for 2020 uh, stuff. I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, VV uh, Flore, Florite's Eye Song, Wonder Egg Priority again, the, although the animation and action sequences were spectacular from Cloverworks. Uh, Mugen Train Arc, the TV version, no thank you. Attack on Titan season, uh, final season part one. Honestly, best action for me would be best action sequences. I'm gonna give it to Wonder Egg, even though I don't like the ending for it, but it's just a beautifully drawn show. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna vote for Jujutsu Kaisen, sorry. But it's a great manga and a great anime, but no. <laughs> These are my picks, so yeah. Okay, so next up we have the best ending sequence. Now this of course refers to the ending theme song and the actual animation, not just the song. A lot of people like to confuse that on the internet. So let's go over that list here. We got the Attack on Titan Final Season Part 1 ending, uh, Beastars, Shadows, House, uh, So I'm a Spider, So What? Skate Infinity and Demon Slayer uh, Mugen Train, the TV arc. So, uh, honestly, a lot of great tunes here, uh, but visually, I think it goes to either Skate the Infinity, uh, you got Infinity by Yuri, and uh, the Kumoko san no theme, Ganbare, for So I'm a Spider, So What? I think. This one goes to the spider, honestly. It's such a fun ending uh, to a great series. Best opening sequence. You guys remember when this came out, when the uh, opening for Attack on Titan Final Season Part 1 came out? Everybody was confused at first, but it was a banger. So many TikToks were made for that freaking song. Uh, let's see. You got Jujutsu Kaisen. 
Odd Taxi, a great song. Cry Baby for Tokyo Revengers, yes. Um, I Know Supreme, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S, and Kaibutsu Beastars. This is a lot tougher than it looks. I'm going to say, just for the pure talent that went into making that series and that opening, it's between Odd Taxi and Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid for me. And I think I'm going to give it to the dragons because that opening is beautifully done, in my opinion. I'm going to go with that, even though all the songs are great. I love them, but I got to represent my uh, one of my favorite comedies. Right? Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, vocal performance English. I, I don't watch uh, dubbed anime, so I'll skip on that best now this was pretty random um i don't think this list is the best one honestly why is ayane sakura for uh, gabby in here I, uh, like eden sure whatever i get and um jigen for for lupon the third part six uh, out of this bunch it's either odokawa from odd taxi kumoko soma spiders or what Aoi Yuki just knocked it out of the park. I think she deserves it, honestly. So I'm going to go with that. Aoi Yuki as Kumoko. Best music score. Uh, we got, uh, of course, oh, man, this is hard. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of Sawano and 86 right now is uh, one of the best ones in this list. Uh, Demon Slayer, Mugen Train Arc. I didn't like the score for Mugen Train arc. I thought it was just okay, honestly. Uh, if anything, the Red Light District arc that's airing now as of this video has a better music score. Um, that's just my opinion. Megalobox, it's all right. Uh, Odd Taxi, Odd Taxi, the score was not a thing that stood out to me for the series. It excelled in the story and characters and all that stuff, but I didn't watch it thinking, man, this has a great music score. Uh, Wonder Egg Priority, same deal. It was a lot more subdued. Vivi uh, Florette Ice's song, now this is a musical based uh, show, so it makes sense. But I'm going to give it to Sawano. That score for 86 is a beautiful work of art. Uh, best character design Jujutsu Kaisen, again, <laughs> Odd Taxi, Ranking of Kings, Skate the Infinity, Vivi, and Wonder Egg Priority. If there's one thing that this show should win is the character designs. It is a beautifully drawn show. Uh, I'm going to go with that. Even though I'm thinking, oh, I want to give it to Ranking of Kings or Skate the Infinity. But no, <laughs> Wonder Egg just knocked it out of the park with the art. Cloverworks did a phenomenal job. Best animation. Best overall animation. Um, hmm. This, this is easy. Uh, it To me, at least, it's between um, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S, Mushoko Tensei, you got Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer, Mugen Train Arc, uh, VV again, and Wonder Egg Priority. I think the best animation has to go to Mushoko Tensei. Uh, Studio Bind, I, I love that they were created just to animate the whole series of, uh, the whole adaptation of Mushoko Tensei. That's insane and awesome at the same time so yeah i'm gonna go for them even though kyoto animation just knocked it out of the park with uh, uh miss kobayashi's dragon maid but it's a tough one but i'm gonna give it to uh tensei here uh best director this one is easy um i am going to go you got megalobox 2 nomad attack on titan final season part one jujutsu kaisen Odd Taxi, Wonder Egg Priority again, and Sunny Boy. It's a shame Sunny Boy isn't nominated for other categories because it's a great show. I'm going to go with that because the story is pretty freaking unique and wonderful for an original only anime. I think more people should watch that show. Uh, best fight scene. The nominees are Eden versus the Warhammer Titan. Naruto versus Ishiki, uh, Yuji Itadori versus Nobara, oh, and Nobara Kugisaki, sorry, versus Eso and Kechizu, Vivi versus Yugo Kakitani, 
uh, another... Why two fights from Jujutsu Kaisen? Come on, guys. Alma versus Toru. You know what? I'm not going to vote for Jujutsu Kaisen. Sorry. This fight from VV was really freaking well done. Like, like holy crap, movie level uh, animation right there. But I got to go with the Dragons. Alma versus Toru. That was an amazing fight. Loved it. Uh, best antagonist. This is pretty funny. You got Eren Yeager, Attack on Titan, Final Season Part 1. Tomura Shigaraki from My Hero Academia Season 5. Yano from Hot Taxi. Echidna from ReZero Season 2. Uh, Teta Kisaki from Tokyo Revengers. And Shindo, or Adam, from Skate the Infinity. Adam was hilarious. Same with Yano. I think the best antagonist or villain. I gotta give it to Echidna. Um... I'm going to go with that. No questions. But then you go to best protagonist and you got Ed and Jaeger again. Which is it? Are, are we going to go for antagonist or protagonist? Come on now. Give other characters a shot. Not just stick Attack on Titan on every single category because you want it to win. Uh, Yuji Itadori, Orukawa. Hands down, Boji is the winner here. You got Joe from Megalobox and I from Wonder Egg Priority. Wonderful characters, but Prince Boji, he's the best protagonist. Uh, I don't like these two categories. Best girl. Best girl, you got uh, Milize from 86, Toru from Fruits Basket, Sarasa, Sarasa Watanabe, sorry, from Kageki Shoujo, uh, Nobara from Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Komi from Komi Can't Communicate, and I from, from, and I from Wonder Egg Priority. Got to give it to uh, my girl, Toru. She was the best. Best boy, I already know who's going to win this. Uh, you got Senku again. That's nice. Izumi from Horimiya. Oh, and I should have said Dr. Stone season two, but you're seeing it with me here. Otokawa from Odd Taxi. Boji, Ranking of Kings. Draken from Tokyo Revengers. And Mikey from Tokyo Revengers. I'm going all in for Boji. He's, he's the best. There we go. And here we are, anime of the year, according to Crunchyroll. This is a damn shame, because we all know that the best anime of 2021 was Heike Monogatari. But it's not streaming on Crunchyroll, so why would it be here, right? You got 86, Attack on Titan Final Season Part 1, Jujutsu Kaisen, Odd Taxi, Ranking of Kings, and Sunny Boy. Sunny Boy is... Fin well, Sunny Boy isn't airing either, but, you know, Sunny Boy is phenomenal. Odd Taxi and Ranking of Kings are on my list for Best of 2021. I made a video on that if you want to check it out. I placed Odd Taxi higher than Ranking of Kings. I'm going to stick with Odd Taxi. A fantastic, underrated story with great characters. and Just an overall great uh, thriller suspense drama series that I highly recommend you check out. So, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Odd Taxi. So there you go. Those are my picks for the 2022 edition of the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. Uh, what do you think of my picks? What do you think of the nominees? Leave those comments down below. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of this wonderful community. Thank you so much. I've got to go. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.